whereas we have these very large surface areas, inherently large surface areas. So that gives us a large enough capture area to be able to capture the flow. Um, we think about 0.5 meters per second, it can start generating electricity. So an, an underwater vehicle with very large propellers could in principle uh, have enough surface area for that slow flow of water to recharge its own batteries, but very large propellers are, are impractical for various reasons. And they'd also need two propellers side by side rotating in opposite direction. Otherwise the propeller is gonna spin the vehicle in a, in a flow. So the reaction force of the propeller has to have something uh, to counter it. it, has to be a reaction force to counter the, the, uh, the rotation of the propeller. So you need two propellers like a Chinook helicopter in opposite directions for the, for the vehicle to charge itself. Whereas we have a self-reacting mechanism. So the fins are reacting against each other rather than against some, uh, some external fixing point in order to, to get the torques to turn the motors, charge the batteries. And you mentioned deep ocean, and actually that brings up an interesting point. Uh, how deep can this robot go? Can this robot dive down to the actual depths of the ocean? Yeah, so the robot that you've seen is not depth rated. So it's not gonna be going down into the bottom of the sea, but it can be made, uh, it can be made um, deep sea capable. And the engineering challenges of deep sea uh, technology are sort of universal. There's nothing about our platform that is inherently any easier or harder to make capable of withstanding great depths. And the engineering problems around depth are pretty well worked out at this point by the oil and gas industry primarily. And there is no reason why our system couldn't be made to withstand great depths. We haven't done that work yet. Mm -hmm. And another question. Firstly, I'm wondering what all the sensors that the robot is using to um, understand the world around it? And also, how is this robot able to localize its position and orientation as it's going through multiple different environments? Yeah, that is a, that is a, a, uh, a good question. And we have a whole array of sensors uh, and, and solutions for how to make that, make that happen. There are, there are many ways to approach it. And, and there's a whole menu of different sensors you can put on at any vehicle like this. We share the same challenges as other marine robotic companies in this regard. And there are new sensors and new technologies coming out all the time. And uh, what the final combination of sensors and software platforms uh, is not yet been determined. And it, it changes quite frequently. Things that we were considering a couple of years ago have now been uh, 